Okay, so this court, all right, granted I'm slightly bigger than the average red size player. Yeah. All right, tell me some of the things I have to do physically. Good, so I have to be able to move side to side. Yeah? Did I have to split step? No. Not necessarily. And actually, not necessarily full stop, right? Split step's one of those things you have to do in orange really well because there's a lot of space and you have to move fast. In red, you don't have to do it. And there is a little bit of a danger on split step, which I was at a club last night and they were doing happy feet, you know? Yeah, and the ball comes, and the kid's still doing it as the ball comes, right? Because what kids don't do is they don't phase very well at a young age. They don't go from here to stop and go. When they get a little bit stronger and older, they, they phase well. They can go here and then change. But when they're little, they're still doing this. It's like trying to do, they're trying to do this kind of thing. You know, the ball comes and this off oh, should have stopped, right? It's not really required. The key thing here on red, move, stop hit and be on balance um, and we talk a lot physically about what balance is what is balance of right it's controlling my center of gravity my position and posture yeah and most of the time in tennis that's done especially at the younger age by slowing down the key thing for little kids is not to speed up but to be able to slow down so in terms of physical skill, what you want them to be able to do is move and stop, move and stop. And if they can't move and stop, they're going to struggle to play good tennis at this level. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for good lateral movement. We're looking for move and stop. Okay. And in doing that, we're looking for that to happen on our outside foot. And when we do that, we're looking for Patrick Swayze in Dirty Dancing. Those of you that are too young to know the, the movie, you need to go get an education. Okay? In other words, you have to understand, uh, if, I'll give you another example I always use. You know how they draw a roadrunner? Yeah, they draw the bird like that, then they draw the legs like that. That's a tennis player. This bit should stay still, these bits do the work. Really great quote from years ago for the, te the tennis teachers conference here, Larry Stefanki said, you know Larry Stefanki? Yeah. yeah, famous coach. Said tennis is a leg sport. People don't understand tennis as a leg sport. It's a really great quote. In other words, this is the engine. Yeah, this is the execution, but this is the engine going on down here. All right, my ability to move, stop and hit. Yeah, if everybody came to your club and they could all do this. You know where you'd be? You'd be dead. You'd have met your maker. You'd be in heaven, all right? It'd be the end of your life, all right? It's not going to happen, right? But wouldn't it be great if we taught that and we tried to get kids to do that? So, some simple little exercises. Um, I'll let you try just a couple, but we'll do it. We'll just try one or two, then I'll show you the rest, if that's probably the easiest way to do this. Esu, go there. All right, okay. So, real simple, I've rejected you. You can go away. All right, okay. So, real simple things. If we put our hands up like this, you might have seen this before. We put our hands up like this and we get our eyes focused. That will keep our head still. Our head is the biggest part of our body to control, right? <laughs> our head is the biggest part of our, don't say that, biggest part of our, no time for humour, we're going too fast today. Biggest part of our body to control, right? When we're little, remember when we're four, body shape, Bart Simpson. Big head, little arms and legs, right? Very difficult to control. So we try and focus our eyes. I see so many people do this, they do exercises, they don't tell the kids where to look. So even if you're doing butt kicks or knee lifts or whatever, and you're running across the court, you pick a point on the court straight ahead. And that's where you're focusing. And that will keep this bit still, and then that will keep this bit still, and then your legs start doing the work. Really crucial, all right? So, real simple little mirror. We're gonna put our hands up here, not touch. We're gonna go to the line, right? And we're gonna stop on our outside leg when we get there. You ready? Go. So we go like that. When we get there, we're gonna stop on this leg like that. Just lift your leg up. That's it, so you hold your balance. Go, 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 go. Stop. That's it. All right. So basically, 
and then we can add a whole load of things, right? So we can do stuff like throw the ball backwards and forwards. Ready? Go. Go like this. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. All right, when we get to the end, we've got to stop. Go stop. That's it. Oh, come on. All right. The one we don't do is this one. Can you see why? You're suddenly doing, you know, <laughs> this kind of stuff. We want that. All right, so it seemed like a good idea because we were thinking about the ball, but actually stopped us doing the thing we were trying to make happen. Okay? Um, we could also do clapping things. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right? Yeah, anything that involves keeping everything here and this bit still in a mirror. All right? Let me show you one more, then you can have a try at it. Other thing, when we stop in tennis, we always want to open our hip and go heel toe. Yeah? Just do this real simple. Everyone stand real straight. Put your foot forward on your toes. All right, now put your heel down. Where's your weight? Still on the back foot, yeah? Okay, do it again, lift your heel up. Put your heel down first. Now put your toes down. Where's your weight? Yeah, so when, you, when we, when we want to get this thing to work, we're always looking at seeing if we can get the kid to go here, here. Now, before you start thinking about open stance, closed stance, other stance, understand this. This bit's always the same. I'm always going to go there. Then this is going to move based on where I want my weight to finish. So if I want to go to that corner, chances are now I'll go this way because that's where my weight's going to finish. All right? I go here, but actually I want to go cross. I'm going to come round a lot more. That's where my weight's going to finish. You see that? So everyone likes to put stances in a box. Closed stance, neutral stance, open stance, da 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 But the key thing is, if you don't get that outside foot like that, and I see lots of players still playing like this, and they're off balance the whole time, and then they miss, and then the coach talks about the racket. But the reason they missed was because basically they were playing st tennis in stilettos. Now if you've ever worn stilettos, even if it was only on a Sunday, all right, you know it's very hard to keep your balance, okay? So we like to put these things in boxes, but the reality is that's important. One more thing, all right, one more thing. Let me just show you something about this head before we go any further and how important that is, I'm gonna let you try it. Right, what I want you to do, okay, I want everyone to just turn, to turn into a 14-year-old boy, all right? So what you gotta do is put your head down like that, okay? Like that, all right, put your head down, okay? Now, what I want you to do is lift one of your knees up as high as you can. Okay? Until it hurts, and it'll hurt very quickly. Right? <laughs> now change and look forwards. Right? Now lift one of your knees up. See how much easier it was? You see how this actually can control a, a function of where we want him to go open here, yeah, every single time. If he puts his foot on the ball, you see, I could just stop it like that. Now my hips are facing forward. Every drill we do, is a re we've got a reason. Because we get these kids one hour or two hours a week, we better get this right. You know what, if you're teaching high performance 15 year olds and you screw up a couple of the hours of the week, fine, you've got another 10 hours to work with them. You screw up the one hour of the week that you get these kids, right, that's 100% of their tennis for this week, yeah? That's 1 50th of their annual tennis. You can't afford to make a mistake, you need to be better at this than anything else. All right, just go play with those two for a minute. Try some mirror things, try and keep your head and body still. Try and stop on your outside foot, what's involved in that, and then just try and kick. Sorry, you had a question, I didn't come to it. Yeah, so is this how you're actually teaching the kids how to move and stop? Yeah, this is the warm-up. This is the warm-up. And how would you explain to them verbally? I would, I would show them how they've got to get to the ball and stop to be able to hit it to be on balance, and then I'll come back to it in the warm-up. So we'll always go backwards and forwards between hitting and physical, hitting and physical. Always connect the two. Like we'll always go backwards and forwards between cooperative, competitive, cooperative, competitive. 